The AI world is back with another three-letter acronym. Last time it was MCP, or the Model Context Protocol. This time it's A2A from Google, and it's the agent-to-agent protocol. Let's see what it is, how it works, and does it replace or complement MCP? Let's get right into it. Now, to understand this A to A protocol, it's really good to understand MCP, which is a related protocol. I've got a full overview video of that, and there's a link in the description right down below. Now, before we begin, one little thing. This is a copyrighted video, and if you're not watching it on the Blue Collar Coder channel, you're not in the right place, and I do not consent to this being rebroadcast on any other platform. So let's say that you want to book a flight. So you've got Claude Desktop over here. Claude Desktop is an MCP client. It can connect to an MCP server from the airline and say, list your tools. What do you have available for me to interact with your airline? The airline would send back, I've got tools to search flights and book flights. Your MCP client says, hey, that's great. I want you to search for a flight for Portland to Honolulu. It sends back some JSON data encoded as text. Claude then selects the flight that I want to go on to and then invokes the book flight tool which returns, hey, I got a flight for you. What's really going on here is that Claude is interacting with an LLM or a language learning model and invoking tools within that MCP server to get that done. So that's the model contracts protocol and people nowadays are calling it the USB-C for AIs. A to A is this agent to agent protocol. So let's start talking about what an agent is. In the A to A protocol model, an agent is a combination of an LLM or large language model and tools. The agent takes an incoming task, uses the LLM to reason about that task and then tools to execute on that task. And the ADA protocol allows either you or an agent to talk to another agent. So let's take that example scenario of you booking a flight. Now you would have access to some ADA client. Now that's actually not doable today. There are no kind of consumer ADA clients. All we have right now for ADA is this Google GitHub repo that has some sample code in it, it is not actually productized in any way. So this is what's going to be in the future. So you've got your A to A client. It has access to an LLM. It sends off a chat style message. Please book a flight. Here are the specifics of that flight. That agent that exists within that A to A server then uses its own LLM to parse that request and use the tools that we talked about before, searching flights and booking flights internally to go and book that flight. And then it sends back a chat style response. Again, agents are LLMs plus tools. And this is agents talking with other agents across that A to A protocol. Now, if that wasn't cool enough, the really interesting part about A to A is that I can connect with, for example, a travel agent agent, that travel agent, would have its own LLM that it's connected to, but it would also be connected to downstream agents, like an airline agent and a hotel agent and a car agent. So conceivably, I could make a request like, hey, go and book an entire trip to Honolulu, and it would figure out, I need to go on this airline at this time, go into this hotel, rent this car, and all that. And the way that it's going to do that is that that travel agent is going to use that same A to A protocol to connect itself to the airline agent, hotel agent, and that car agent. So here's the A to A site. It's a really good read. And you can also get some samples. And in this case, that is the Google A to A repo. Now that repo not only has example agents in both JavaScript and Python, but it's also got a demo application that you can connect to that acts as a multi-agent. Kind of like the travel agent in our example, It's a single site that then connects to multiple agents simultaneously to try and get something done. So I've actually built on top of that demo code and built a hotel agent and a flight agent that we can connect to on that demo. So those are both running in my terminal. Here we have our hotel agent, and here we have our flight agent, and we've got the demo app running over here in our third terminal. So let's go into our browser, see how we go. This is really beta stuff, so this might work and might not. So this is the demo UI, and it's actually currently hooked up to both those agents. So let's try it out. Let's ask it to book a trip to Maui. All right, this is actually a pretty good response from what I've seen. So it's telling us it's going to coordinate with both the flight agent and the hotel agent. I apologize in advance for the CSS here. That was part of the demo. All right, I'll give it a little more information, and we'll see what happens. 
All right, it looks like it's interacting with the flight agent pretty well, but it's not doing that well with the hotels. But I think you can see the point and also the status of the project. It's a really cool idea. It's just very early days. Now, there is one more way to interact with those agents that you might be interested in if you want to try this out for yourself. If I go into that samples.js directory and then I run this A to A CLI client and then I give it the URL of the agent that I want to talk to, in this case, we'll go with the hotel agent. We give it that hotel agent URL. This brings up an interactive terminal with that specific agent. Now, one interesting thing right away is we have this agent card that is returned to us and that gives all the specifics about that particular agent. There's more to it than what we're seeing here. I'll show you that in just a bit. We can actually have a chat session with it right now. So you can do slash new to start a new task. That's a core feature of the ADA protocol. You have tasks with these agents. All right, I've used this A to A client CLI tool to make the request of tell me what hotels you have available to that hotels agent. And it's gotten back a reasonably decent response based on that demo data. Let's take a very quick look at one of these servers themselves to give you some background on that. I'm a JavaScript person, so that's what I used for this. We'll take a look at that hotel agent. As I mentioned before, this is just demo data that I created over in hotels.ts, but the really fun stuff is over in index.ts. So to start up our server, we bring in the class for A to A server from the local server index.js file. That's actually a really important indicator about where this project is in terms of its deployment. There are no A to A packages out in the no module space right now to support A to A. If you want to develop on this, you're literally going to be using the POC code for the protocol itself. Right down the bottom here, we instantiate that A to A server with one of the most important things, which is our card. The card, and all A to A servers have cards, is essentially the calling card of the agent. It's the name, the description, the current URL, although I think you have gotten the URL, but whatever, it's okay. The version, the capabilities, whether it actually streams responses or not, and then an array of skills, and it's those skills that allow a multi-agent, that's an agent that talks to other agents, to decide what agents to use and when. The rest of this sets up a handler, and that handler takes incoming requests and then passes them off to the AI of your choice. In this case, it uses Google's GenKit, and the underlying model is Gemini 2.0 Flash. Of course, you get to process those messages however you want and send them to any model you want. If you want to send the Olama, OpenAI, Hugging Face, whatever you want to do, you can do that. All right, so given what I know today, let's talk about what's good and bad with A2A. So A2A uses JSON RPC as the schema to talk between the two A2A client and server instances. And I think that's a fantastic choice when it comes to over the wire communications. And it is what MCP uses, so it's a fantastic analog to MCP. I love the idea that they have of an agent marketplace, that there would be some registry where my multi-agent could go and say, hey, give me an agent that does this. It would give me back a URL. It would get the card and start talking to the agent. I think that's a fantastic concept. I love this idea of this agent card that gives back to you either as a human or as another agent to see, is this going to actually do the kind of work that I want to do? Another great feature of A2A is it allows us to select the right model for the use case. Each one of these agents gets to decide which model it's going to use to service its request. In the original example with Claude and MCP, we're going to keep using that Claude Sonnet model for every one of our use cases, and that might not be the right model. A2A allows us to say, we want this model for this request and even have tuned models per agent. Authentication is built right into the protocol from the get-go. This is a huge advantage over what we got originally out of the box with MCP, which didn't have any authentication, but now does. I also like that they've learned other lessons from MCP. Like for example, A to A does not support the standard IO protocol. You can't just run one of these servers as a command. I think that's actually a really good way to go because if you had that, then you wouldn't be able to do the registry or the agent marketplace concept that they were talking about. Also, I think the docs at this point in the evolution of the product are excellent. All right, so what's not so good? Well, the current code state, I would say, the actual code docs need a lot of work. So unless you're a developer that's familiar with both JavaScript and Python, it's gonna be a while before you get this set up and running. And there's really not a lot of good feedback when it comes to what's wrong with your setup. So you're going to need to do a lot of debugging and digging in, which for me is fun, but I know for a lot of folks is frustrating. I think reliability and testing is going to be a problem, particularly as these agent networks grow. And then there's what I'm calling the multi-agent hairball. So what's that? Well, think about this multi-agent, the travel agent, the agent that's talking to other agents. Well, that agent 
he's going to be really complex. As you saw when you're doing that interactive example in the browser, that agent is going to have to plan and connect with all these agents. It's going to be a lot of work to get that multi-agent right. And there's going to be multiple different flavors of that multi-agent. So to me, that's really a hairball. And in particular, where the agent is connecting with other agents and making requests of other agents, your initial prompt to the agent is going to be from you. But from following from then on, that multi-agent is going to create its own prompts and be talking to agents on its own. So being able to trace those connections and see what prompts it's generated, we're going to need some serious work in there. And then finally, the idea of a centralized identity or billing system. If I have this registry and I'm going out and talking to all those agents, do I have to have unique contracts with each one of those? That's going to be something that's going to be interesting to see as this standard evolves. So A to A replace MCP? Well, I don't think so. MCP is a lower level standard. It, it presents tools to LLMs. We're always going to need those tools at that level of granularity. And A to A doesn't give us access to those tools at that level of granularity. And I know we've all had frustration with trying to get the prompts to do what we want them to do. So having MCP at that level of granularity, we can't replace that with A to A. So do we need A to A if we have MCP? Maybe, maybe not, actually. I mean, if you've got a tool and that tool invokes an LLM to get stuff done and the new version of the MCP protocol can stream responses back, yeah, you can probably do something similar to what A to A is doing right now inside of MCP. But I do think that would be a misuse of MCP. And I think that having a specific protocol for agents to talk to other agents is valuable. But at the end of the day, I think, as the docs say, A to A loves MCP. LLMs plus tools are agents. MCP gives agents those tools. So that's why A to A and MCP play really nicely together. All right, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. And in the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. You'll be notified the next time a new blue collar coder comes out.